Hey, Adam from b and Lens, and today I'm going to show you how to make a really professional looking thumbnail for your YouTube video by blending a photograph with text in Photoshop. So, let's get down to it. So this channel, b and Lens, is about all things photography and all things Brisbane. And I've got some really cool Brisbane related content coming up, as well as some cool photography related videos. But this particular video is inspired by a question that one of my subscribers asked me. And the great thing about having not a great lot of subscribers is that I can actually give you guys a little bit more attention and create videos based on what you actually want to learn about. This was a question from one of my subscribers and they wanted to know how to use text in a thumbnail for a YouTube video and how to really combine it effectively. So I'm going to show you right now, get down to it. This image here is the one I'm going to use because this is the image for the video where they ask the question. So to start with, firstly, we need to make sure we've got the right aspect ratio. So for a YouTube video, that's 16 by nine. So in order to make the correct ratio, all I need to do is select the marquee tool, put fixed ratio, and my width is 16, my height is nine. And I just drag my marquee. Okay, that's looking good. Now I wanna keep it up the top because here is where my text is gonna go. I wanna have it so that it looks like the text is behind the buildings and in the sky here. So that looks good. I, and I, this is, it's good to get rid of this down the bottom anyway. So all I do is just go image, And here is my image. Command D or Control D to deselect. So here's the image I'm going to start with. Now I need to use text. So I just hit the text tool and type in my text. So let's just say thumbnail. I'm gonna go all caps. And there we have it. So I use the move tool to move it to where I want it. Now I wanna have it so that it's just coming behind this building and this building here and in the sky. For me, I usually put my text at a bit of an angle. It's just my thing and you don't have to do it. But for me, I'm gonna make it as if I was making one of my own thumbnails. So I just hit Command T or Control T for the transform tool, go to one corner and just twist it around a little bit. So I'm gonna just make it like that, hit enter to accept. Now I've got my move tool, I'm gonna to move it to where I want it. Okay, so it's gonna go somewhere around here so that this building here is gonna be in front of it and this building here, but there's still enough of the text for us to be able to read it, which is really important. That's that, so I've got my background layer and I've got my text layer. What I'm going to do first though is I'm actually going to duplicate that text layer. So Command J or Control J with that text layer selected, will make a copy of it. And I'm going to add a layer mask, but it's going to be hidden. So to do that, I just hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click on the layer mask tool here. And you see that puts a black layer mask over that layer. So that layer is basically invisible at the moment. So if I click the layer below on and off, you'll see that you can't see the layer above. So I come back to the first text layer that I created and I'm gonna double click on it. And once I've done that, that brings up the layer style dialog box. And on the right hand side, down the bottom, you can see this blend if. So blend if is going to determine how the two layers are going to blend together. So I'm, I'm focused on the underlying layer, that background layer. I'm looking at the buildings here. So these buildings are quite dark in color. So if I want the, the text where the sky is to be visible, but where the buildings to not be visible, then I need to hide this text where the layer below it is quite dark. So in order to do that, I just go to underlying layer and to the dark side, and I drag this arrow back up. And you'll see as I drag it, 
those buildings start disappearing behind the text. And about here looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to see what's happening with the buildings here because I want to make sure the crane is also visible in front of the text. So I'm going to drag it to where it's looking okay for both the building and the crane, where it's blending okay. Now that's okay, but it's not really smooth. So what we do then is hold down the Alt key and click on this arrow to split it. And that'll create a bit of a transition. And we just shift these around until it looks good. All right, so that's looking pretty good in this area. The crane looks good and it's overall, it's pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. But you'll notice when I zoom out that the text here is kind of fading a little bit. And that's because the, the sky here is a little bit darker and it's actually started to blend the text away. We'll deal with that in a moment, but first we just need to clean up a few things around these buildings. You'll see here on this part of the building where the Suncorp sign is that we can see a little bit of that H here. So what's happened is because that's quite a light color where the sign is, it's actually blended it where we didn't want it to blend. All we have to do there is just create a layer mask for our text layer. So hit the layer mask button there with our thumbnail text selected. And then just paint this part in with a black brush because you see here the layer mask is completely white. It means it's all visible. Anywhere we paint in black is going to hide it. So I go to my brush tool or you can just hit B for brush and make sure that I have black selected here. Now sometimes you'll find that it's white at the front and black at the background, but you want black at the front. All you have to do to switch between the two is just press X and that will flip the two. So I've now got a black brush. I need it to be much smaller. So I'm just hitting the bracket key to make it smaller, the left bracket. And then I just paint that in. That's going to bring all of that sign back. And so that is looking pretty good for the buildings and the crane. And don't forget that the thumbnail is going to be pretty small. So, you know, those really tiny details of these wires here for the crane, they don't matter that much because nobody's really going to see it when they're viewing the thumbnail. This is good enough for the thumbnail. They're definitely going to be viewing it much smaller. But we need to fix up where this text is fading a little bit. Now, that's why we created the duplicate text layer. So all I have to do now, because at the moment, that text layer is completely hidden because the mask is completely black. All I need to do is now use a white brush with that layer selected to paint it back in on top of the text layer below it. So I switch my brush to white just by pressing X. I've still got the brush tool selected. I'm going to actually make the brush really big. And now I just paint over the text again, which is going to bring it back. And there we have it. So you can see now that that text is really well integrated with the image. You haven't just slapped it on top like any novice would do. You've actually done something to make it look just a little bit more technically proficient, a little bit more professional. So it's going to be a much better thumbnail. Uh, but it's not always as simple as this one. So if you're ready for it, if you think you can handle this, then let me take you one step further for a more challenging one. Okay, so for number two, here we have 
a photograph, I've already cropped it to the right dimensions and I've got my text in already. Now what a lot of people would do when they're making their thumbnail for YouTube is just leave it like that. They'd put their text in on top of the photo and okay, done. But you want it to look just a little bit more technically proficient. You want to look more professional. So how do you do it? You integrate that text with the photo itself, put it into the scene. So what I want to do is actually have the text here behind this mountain. And I want to have it in front of this one and also behind this one. And I want the clouds to be coming kind of in front of the text so that the text is actually in there sort of halfway back into the scene. So some of the clouds are in front, some of the clouds are behind the text. And then obviously these branches here, I want to be in front of the text as well. All right, so how am I gonna do that? This one's a little bit trickier because you actually have to blend it in different stages. So the first thing I'm gonna do, as I did with the last one, is I'm going to duplicate that text layer. So Command J or Control J, depending on if you're on PC or Mac, to make a copy. And I'm just gonna hide that for now. And I'm gonna work on the bottom text layer to start with. And I'm gonna be focused firstly on the clouds. I want to put the text behind the clouds. So just like before, double click on the layer to bring up the layer style box. And then I'm going to come to underlying layer. And as I bring this up, I'm basically blending away the darker parts and I'm focusing particularly on the clouds. So you can see as I bring it up, the clouds are kind of moving in front. It's still not looking great. It's just, it's kind of, black and white kind of thing. It's there's no gray, there's nothing blending. So just like before, I hold down Alt, click on the arrow to split it so I can get a smoother blend. And now it's looking more natural where those clouds are coming in. I'm not really looking down here just yet, just focused on the clouds and I'm blending it for that. So maybe a bit more cloud, something like that. Okay, I'm happy with that where the clouds are coming, you can see they're coming just a little bit in front of the text. So it looks a little bit more integrated. And you'll see that as a bonus, this mountain is also now in front of the text, which is great, except that we want the bottom of this part of the text to be visible because it's not going to be behind the horizon. We want it sort of about here. And also we want it behind this mountain so that it looks like the text is actually between these two mountains or hills, if you like. So it's looking okay here behind the tree, but we kind of need to do a little bit more work to really integrate it more skillfully. So I'm gonna hit okay, and here's where I'm going to come up to my second layer. So I'm going to hit the eye to make it visible. And you'll see now that that's on top of the other one, we can't see any of the work we just did, but that's okay. What we can do is we can hide the part of this top text layer to reveal the parts that are blended already that we're happy with. So I'm going to create a layer mask, just hitting this button down here. And I'm going to use a black brush to brush away the parts where the clouds had blended and also where this mountain had blended because we were pretty happy with the result there. So select my brush tool. Now at the moment, the foreground is white. I need it to be black. So of course I hit X to switch it. And now I'm just going to paint, making sure that the layer mask is selected. Just paint so that it hides the top text layer and reveals the text layer below where we did that really nice blending. Now here, the mountain was nicely in front of the text. So we can, be, we can just paint that out. So we're getting there. The M is okay, the O is okay, the U, but the bottom of the N here, we wanna hide it behind that hill. 
and we also want to hide things behind these branches. So just as we did with the bottom layer, the bottom text layer, we're going to double click on this and we want to blend if again. But this time, instead of using gray, we're going to come down to blue and just deal with the blue channel. So now as we drag it up, you'll see that these branches here are coming through, but it's still in front of these other things. So that's looking better. And also the, the hill here, it's beginning to hide behind that hill. So that's looking all right. Again, I'm going to hold Alt down to split this arrow just to create a smoother transition there. And I'm especially paying attention to the top of this hill here and these branches here because they're the parts where we're really blending at the moment. We don't want to move it so much that these hills start coming through. So bring it back down. And that looks pretty good there. So hit OK. So now we have it behind the clouds, behind the mountain, and behind the branches, behind this mountain. And there we have it. Mount Mungun, the text integrated with the image so that it looks like it's actually sitting right there. And you look like a pro because you haven't just slapped the text on top of the picture. You've actually integrated it in a way that is quite technical looking. Um, but you can still read the text. And so that's how you do it. That's how you can effectively blend text with image to create your YouTube thumbnails. Uh, anything else you want to learn? As I said before, because I don't have a great lot of subscribers at the moment, uh, happy to make videos based on what you actually want to learn. So this is your opportunity. Don't forget to subscribe to be one of those people who has access to tailor-made lessons, ultimately, tailor-made YouTube videos, um, because I'm still not really big that I won't do it. Yeah, apart from that, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what kinds of things you'd like to see. Would you like to see more of the Brisbane content? Would you like to see more of the photography side of things? Uh, and I will see you in the next video.